Okay, this is a worked paper. This uh, paper is a CIE uh, probability and statistics one paper, um, as you can see from uh, February 2022. Uh, the paper is there's, there's an hour and a quarter. The, the video won't take an hour and a quarter because I'm, I'll sort of um, skip through the working and the things that take quite a bit of time when you're actually doing the paper. Uh, so let's just bang on. Um, right, uh, number one, a fair red spinner has edges numbered one, two, two, three, and a blue one, minus three, minus two, minus one, minus one. We spin them both at the same time and we add up the scores. Okay, it says draw up the probability distribution for ta table for X. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so this is the one spinner, this is the, other, the scores of the other spinner. And so these are all the possible values that we've um, that that can ensue from adding the two scores together uh it says drop the probability distribution table i've sort of done a more generic table for part b as well but essentially these first two columns here are the probability distribution table so it's giving us the probability for each value of x how do we know that well for instance that there are we've got five zeros in this table so five out of 16 so any one of these could, these 16 um, uh, cells here, the value in them could happen uh, by random. So um, uh, so therefore the probability of zero, for instance, is five, uh, it would be five sixteenths. Okay, so those first two columns essentially constitute that uh, answer to A. Now, given that the expectation of X is 0.25, find the value of the variance of X. So I'm assuming here you've got some familiarity with uh, the concept of the expectation and variance of a random variable. <clears throat> um, and just to kind of uh, give a little bit of background to that if for instance the 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 expectation is 0.25 and we did we we did this pair of spins 100 times for instance then we would be expecting to see um see um uh, you know uh, 25 a value of 25 if we added up all the values of you know that come out of each throw you know somewhere between minus two and two and we uh, added them up um, then we would expect to see about 25 because some would be zero, some would be ones, uh, the odd minus two in there and so on. So that's the basic idea. So uh, let's have a look at our formula for the variance here, which, uh, <clears throat> well, it is, you know, as, very much as if we are kind of taking the variance of a set of data, but obviously it's a random variable, slightly different. But the process is more or less the same. So uh, we're looking for the, the squares of the differences to the mean. Uh, it, with a bit of mass, we can show that that's equal to this. The expectation of x squared, come back to that, minus the, ex the expectation of x all squared. Uh, so what's the expectation of x squared? <clears throat> well, um, if we square all our x values and get this column here, we've effectively created a new random variable. And what we're doing is we're working out the expectation of that. And, and just in the same way, as with the expectation of x, we're going to multiply each value by its probability and, and take the total <clears throat> for 16 or so 0.25. We're going to do that same thing with x squared. And we get this value here, which is 1.25. <clears throat> so from that, we can directly calculate the variance. Um, so the variance is equal to um, this 1.25 minus the 0.25 there squared. And that just simply comes out to this value here, 1.1875. <clears throat> okay, so that is number one. Let's just go on number two then. <clears throat> In a certain country, the probability of more than 10 centimetres of rain on any particular day is 0.18, independently of the weather on any other day. And slight uh, simplification, I think, but anyway, that's what it's assuming. Find the probability that in any randomly chosen seven-day period, more than two days have more than 10 centimetres of rain. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing we do here is we... 
We find our random variable, which is the number of days with greater than 10 centimeters of rain. Fairly obviously in this uh, situation, um, actually specifying your random variable isn't always so obvious with these questions, but uh, here it's, uh, it's fairly easy. And then we uh, we we spell out the um, probability distribution for that random variable, which we're taking as being binary with seven trials, seven day period, and a probability, a discrete probability of 0.18 there. <clears throat> So um, this is just uh, really from the calculator. Um, it's the probability of x is greater than two. Well, we we're using cumulative um, the cumulative binomial. Then we need to twist this round because everything is less than or equal to. It comes out of the cumulative binomial on your calculator. <clears throat> so it's one minus this, and uh, wow. without pulling the calculator up. Um, Basically, if we go into uh, menu seven, choose binomial cumulative, and we enter our random variable value of one, the number of trials of seven, the value of peak with 0.18, then it will give us this 0.6323, which once we've subtracted it from one, <clears throat> will give us this solution. So 0.3677 is the probability um, that in any randomly chosen seven day period, more than two days have more than seven uh, ten centimeters of rain <clears throat> okay so for part b uh now uh for three randomly chosen seven day periods find the probability that exactly two of these periods have at least one day with more than 10 centimeters of rain now when i first looked at this i was expecting this probability here um with to to carry forward into part b and that often is the case but not so here we've got another thing that we have to worry about here Ex uh, uh, find the probability that um uh, these periods have at least one day so we have to find the probability of at least one day <coughs> um so out of a seven day period so essentially we've got to we've got to go back to this distribution here and work out this probability at least one day which turns out to be that now once we've calculated this 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 value 0.7507 um then what we're actually looking at is we've got a slightly different binomial distribution here because well quite a different one actually because it's the three randomly chosen seven day periods so that is our, our, our number of trials, our n. And um, the probability is the thing we just calculated here, 0 0.7507. Okay, and we are actually calculating that exactly two of those uh, are these sort of, uh, these, these type of uh, uh, periods. Okay, so, um, so our new random variable is the number of periods with at least one rain day in them and uh, <clears throat> so and that is binomial with three trials and a probability of 0 0.7507 and um, we can use our calculator again uh, with a with um, a sort of discrete binomial y equals two and gives us this answer of 0 0.4215 to four decimal places um <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, slightly untypical, this particular question, um, um, in that we have to sort of recalculate a, a value here. Uh, we'll see other examples where that's not the case. But anyway, that's what we've had to do. So that was number two. Number three, at a summer camp, uh, an arithmetic test is taken by 250 children. The times take the nearest minute to complete the test were recorded. The results are summarized in the table. So <clears throat> here we go with all the class intervals and the frequency within those class intervals. It says draw a histogram to represent this information. Uh, it doesn't say what kind of histogram. So I think we kind of just defaulting to this this uh, uh, this basic type here where, um, uh, you know, we're just showing the height for this this uh, this class here. Uh, so we've got 21 here, and then between 30 and 45, we've got 30. Uh, <clears throat> it's not very helpful, this. Um, I think um, a more useful diagrams would either have been a frequency density or a cumulative frequency. 
Um, it doesn't specifically say that, so um, this is just kind of the the sort of the easy option, isn't it? So we've got cumulative. We've got adding up to do uh, to work out the cumulative values. If we do a frequency density, then we have a bit of calculation to work out the area, um, you know, or the or the, the the dimensions of each of each block. <clears throat> so this is a kind of a, a simpler thing. Um, state which class interval contains the median well um 250 children the median is arguably 125 and a half but when we've got a large number we just basically halve it uh, so we're looking for the 125th and if we just count up we can see that that is actually in um uh, in this uh interval here so probably the lower end of that might be maybe 68 would be a reasonable estimate of that. <clears throat> anyway, we're not asked for an estimate, we're just asked for the class interval. And then part C, given that an estimate of the mean time is 61.05 minutes, state what feature of the distribution accounts for the median and the mean being different? Um, <clears throat> well, the, the median and the, and, and the mean will be the same if it's symmetrical, if the distribution is sim symmetrical. Um, and uh, in, uh, that, that's not the case here. <clears throat> uh, in actual fact, we've got a mean which is less than the median. I think we said the median is probably 68, so it's, it's actually less. Um, so, um, uh, so the feature is the skewness, really. Um, but in, in this case, then we would say that it's skewed to the left. The diagram kind of makes it look as if it's skewed to the right. But in actual fact, it depends what you, whether you're talking about values or, or the, the, the the scale of the values. So, um, so it's actually skewed to the to the left. I think we would say this is this is actually um, from Wikipedia. This little quote here. Just uh, if you need any any more convincing of that. So. The distribution is skewed to the left. I think if we were to draw the frequency density of this, you would actually see that it was skewed to the left rather than to the right. So there we go. Um, number four, the weights of male leopards in a particular region are normally distributed with mean 55 kilograms and a standard deviation of six. Find the probability that a randomly chosen male leopard from this region weighs between 46 and 62. Well, uh, yeah, again, our random variable is the weight of the, of the, of the leopard, of the male leopard, a randomly chosen male leopard, male leopard, I might say. And that is uh, distributed according to this uh, normal mean of 50. Five and a standard deviation of six. We always write the variance in here. So if we write standard deviation squared, then <clears throat> that sort of covers both bases. And we want um, the probability that it falls between 46 and 62. Right, so again, I'm not going to show you how to use the calculator on this. That's sort of a, a, subject for a separate video, but in short, if we choose menu seven and then cumulative normal, this is our lower value. This is our upper value. We enter these two parameters, hit the equals, and we will get this probability 0.8115, which has two four decimal places. Uh, <clears throat> OK, uh, so that's part A. Um, um, right, the weights of female leopards in this region are normally distributed with a mean 42 and a standard deviation of sigma. It is known that 25% of female leopards in the region weigh less than 36 kilograms. Right, okay, so... Um, why do they ask us this question? Why don't they give us a standard standard deviation? Well, the the point here is that um, uh, really what we're, we're being tested on our understanding of the standard normal distribution, i.e., the, the the normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Um, because the calculators now are kind of so. Um, so functional, I mean, we can do any, work out any probabilities really for any any standard deviation and um, any mean. Um, but um, 
that by framing the question like this, it really requires us to actually fall back onto the um, onto the standard normal distribution. So let's just have a look. So if a random variable is the weight of a female leopard and it's distributed normally with these parameters, uh, <clears throat> uh, the corresponding um, statistic, because of, of course the, the shape of the curve is the same whether or not we have, um, uh, whether or not as a some standard mean and standard deviation or whether the mean and standard deviation are zero and one the shape is the same so we have two you know for any sort of areas on this curve we have two corresponding points one is our y value is the actual weight of the female leopard and the other one is the standard normal um random variable value um so um, and, you know, these are connected, uh, basically, it, basically, well, we, we, we scale and uh, we, well, we shift and scale our random variable to actually turn it into a standard normal. Now, it's not a full description, that's a bit of a, a reminder of what we do. Again, there's another video dealing with uh, how we do this. So um, the, the probability that... Um, our random variable y is less than 36 is 0.25. That is given to us in here. Um, and we also know, and we can use the, the uh, inverse normal function on the calculator to actually work out what the standard normal random variable is that corresponds to 0 0.25, a bit of reverse engineering in a way. Um, so, um, using our little formula here, <clears throat> that's our actual Z value, ZT, T we use for test statistic, but it kind of works here, uh, is going to be equal to our um, Y value minus the mean, that's the mean now, divided by the standard deviation which we don't know. However, what we have now is an equation in sigma, and we can work that through, and that gives us uh, sigma equals 8.9. So that is the answer to point B. Um, <clears throat> right. The distributions of the weights of male and female leopards are independent of each other. A male leopard and a female leopard are chosen, each chosen at random. Find the probability that both the weights of these leopards are less than 46 kilograms. Ah. Well, um, basically, um, if they're independent, then we can multiply the two probabilities together. So we're going to uh, work out the probability that the male is less than 46 and the female is less than 46. Uh, <clears throat> And um, again, just using our calculator, we see it's, it's it's this. In actual fact, the probability that the female is is uh, that the, the female is less than forty six very very likely. Um, so uh, so we get this probability uh, for the combination of the two. Okay, so that is um, that's what we do there. All right, number five. Move on to this. Um, right. So this is a. Um, Kind of an area called combinatorics. It's uh, it's. Uh, I think this is the trickiest part of the part of the syllabus. Uh, myself, uh, the solution to these questions often, in, you know, requires a little bit of innovation, and you have to kind of be able to reframe the question, um, and that's the difficult thing. Anyway, this first bit's fairly straightforward. Now, a group of twelve people consists of three boys, four girls, and five adults. In how many ways can a team of five people be chosen from the group if exactly one adult is included? Right. So, so, um, so the team's going to have one adult, and then, then the four remaining um, team places, um, youngins, um, can be chosen out of seven. So um, that's um, and again, we can multiply these uh, these together. Uh, these arrangements are not the probabilities, but we can do that. 
Um, so uh, we've got one, uh, five choose one. So from five, we're choosing one. And that's, uh, so I'm using that notation for that. And then we're choosing four out of seven for the, the youngsters. Um, so um, that is equal to this lot times this lot. Okay, well, you, if you can uh, know the definition of um, um, NCR, um, that's what it is. It's a seven factorial divided by four factorial times three factorial, four and three being seven. <clears throat> okay, so uh, if we just work that through, then we're going to get this number 175. So that is the answer to part a part b um in how many ways can a team of five people be chosen from the group if the team includes at least two boys and at least one girl now this the, at, at this point we need to really start kind of considering all the separate cases um so there's no sort of really quick way of doing it as far as I can see anyway um so uh, we just use a bit of notation so one possibility of having this would be to have two boys one girl and two adults another would be two boys two girls and one adult two boys three girls three boys one girl one adult and three boys and two girls so so that would be um <clears throat> those would be the five different uh, possibilities now we've got this we can see that that to choose those two boys, we're choosing two out of three. Uh, we're choosing one girl out of four. We're choosing two adults out of five. So that's going to be three C2. Three choose two times four choose one times five choose two. And that's going to give us 120. OK, if we work that through. And well, uh, likewise, uh, exactly the uh, corresponding arguments for all of these and the and a, and a number that drops out at the end there as well so these are all the possibilities we add those up we get 248 okay <clears throat> so that's the number of ways a team of five people can be chosen if the team includes at least two boys and at least one girl boys at least two boys and one girl Right, the same group of 12 people stand in a line. How many different arrangements are there in which the three boys stand together and an adult is at the end of each line? <clears throat> Who thought this up? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> right. Okay, so um, now if the three boys stand together, we're sort of considering... Um, well, 12 people We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got ten spaces in a sense, because those three boys are together. So those three boys are occupying one space. <coughs> right. So um so, so there are eight in between um there. So we could have eight different fact eight factorial ways of arranging the <clears throat> the the you know the non-adults. The adults have got to go at the end, haven't they? <clears throat> so um arrangements of girls and I think that should say um, with the boys in in you know uh, sort of embedded in there. <clears throat> so um right um so that's eight factorial um now yeah i've sort of said the boys are, are just act as one one um one group but it does matter which order they they they, st they stand in boy a boy b boy c or boy c boy a boy boy b or or whatever so we've got another th <coughs> three factorial that we have to uh, take into account there. All right. Um, and then we've got our two adults to think about as well. Well, we don't know which two adults they are. We've got five to choose from. But it does matter which way round they are, actually, doesn't it? You know, um, adult one and adult two, or adult two and adult one, or adult three and adult four. So, so the order does matter. So whilst we can choose two, from uh, from five, the order does matter. So in this case, we're not using five. Choose two, which would be which wouldn't 
care which way around they were. This in this case we do care, so we, we're using five p two. Right. So we have to work all this lot out. It's obviously going to be quite a big number, isn't it? Eight factorial times three factorial. Um, anyway, um, so bypassing the actual calculation. Uh, let's assume we can we can do that. Just put it into our calculator actually, and it will give us this uh, this total here, which is uh, best part of five million um, different choices. So um, good luck with that. Right. Oh, um, so that's number five. Now let's have a look at number six, which is undoubtedly the trickiest one in this uh, in this paper. <clears throat> um, so a factory produces chocolate in three flavors: lemon, orange, and strawberry, in the ratio of three to five to seven. And Nell checks the chocolates on the production line by choosing chocolates randomly, one at a time. So we don't know if she eats them or uh, she can just um, pick them up wearing her um, rubber gloves and check them somehow. Um, but anyway, um, that's what she does. And it says, find the probability that the first chocolate with lemon flavour that Nell chooses is the seventh chocolate that she checks. So this is it's called a Bernoulli trial. Um, effectively, we've got um, we've got six non-lemons and followed by a lemon so what is the product probability again six non-lemons followed by a lemon um well they the probability of of, of, a, of picking a lemon is one fifth isn't it three out of 15 from there and not a lemon is 12 out of 15 or four fifths so the probability that the seventh is a lemon is basically the probability that the first six are not lemons Four to the power of four fifths to the power of six times the the seventh being a lemon. So if we work that out, we're going to get this probability here. That's from the calculator. Uh, okay. Now part B: find the probability that the first chocolate with lemon flavour that Nell chooses is after she has checked at least six chocolates. We've kind of sort of done this in the first part, really. Um, so really, what we're asking is that the seventh is lemon. The the first lemon is a seventh, or the or, or it's the eighth, we might have had seven non-lemons and then a lemon and so on. Well, we're not kind of interested, really. All we're interested in is the fact that the first six aren't lemons. Um, so, uh, and that is given by four-fifth to the power of six. Oh, this number here, 0. 0.262, uh, 144. Okay, so uh, that is that. <clears throat> And then it goes on. A surprise boxes of chocolates each contain 15 chocolates, three lemon, five orange, and seven are strawberry. Um, you would have thought if it was a surprise box, they might be random. But anyway, that's um, that's what they're saying. You're going to have three lemon in your surprise box. Petra has a box of surprise chocolates. She chooses three at random from the box, and she eats each chocolate before choosing the next one, which basically says she's not putting it back in the box. Um, find the probability that none of Petra's three chocolates has orange flavour. Okay, well, she is choosing... Um, <clears throat> okay, there's, there's five that are orange. There are ten that are not uh, orange. So so the probability of the first one um, is, um, is ten fifteenths. That's ten uh, non-orange and... 50 out of 15 in total, so 10 fifteenths. Uh, so this is a, a without replacement type problem because the next stage, the prob there are nine uh, non-orange ones out of 14. So that's the probability of choosing a non-orange one for the second and then similarly for the third. So this is the probability of... Um, those three being non-orange ones, we multiply those together, we get this figure, which as a decimal is 0.263, etc. <clears throat> right, so that is that one. Um, find the probability that each that each of Petra's three chocolates has a different flavour. 
Right. Okay. So um, now uh, at this point, a little bit of notation, I think. Um, lemon, orange, and strawberry. So, um, so the the probability of getting a lemon, then an orange, then a strawberry. Okay. There's three lemons out of fifteen. Then there's fourteen, but there's still five orange ones. And then there are thirteen, and there are still seven strawberries so so this um product here which comes to 126 once we simplify the fraction um is is the probability of this um combination but actually we've got we've got six different combinations like this i mean probability of l of lemon then a strawberry then an orange is another uh, similar probability and um although the numerators and the swap around with the denominators um we still end up with the same product okay so in this case three you know the first one's a lemon that's three out of 15 then we've got a strawberry which is seven out of 14 and then an orange which is five out of then would be 13 so that's a 26 so there are six different ways and each has a probability of 1 26th so the probability, therefore, is uh, six times one twenty-sixth, or three thirteenths. Right. <clears throat> um, and find the probability that at least two of Petra's three chocolates have strawberry flavour, given that none of them has an orange flavour. Right, OK. So what we're calculating here is the total arrangement of, of just what they've said, at least two out of three being strawberry, um, divided by the total number of arrangements where there is no orange. Right, again, we're going to use our little sort of, uh, our, our, you know, our, our notation here. So we could have, what could we have for, for this? At least two out of three are strawberries, obviously. And, then, and possibly the other one being a lemon. And um, so we've got strawberry, strawberry, lemon, strawberry, lemon, strawberry, lemon, strawberry, strawberry. And then, of course, we've got the possibility of three are strawberry, 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 strawberry. Um, OK, just wind that up a bit. Uh, and then out of the total arrangements where there is no orange. So, oh, cracky. OK, so, so strawberry, 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 strawberry. You have to just go through these and satisfy yourself uh, that that is indeed the, an exhaustive list of the possibilities where there is no orange. Right. <clears throat> OK, so let's look at the numerator here. Well, the ones where um, it's just three strawberries is just going to be this one, isn't it? We've got seven out of 15 and then uh, there's only six strawberries left in there, but um, out of 14 and then there's only five strawberries left in out, out of 13. And so so that would that corresponds to the SSS. And then we've got, th well, the probability of each of these is going to be this. Uh, and again, we the, 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 the numerators could be swapped around. We, we, we were choosing from 15, then from 14, then from 13. And um, for, for one of these combinations, it's going to be 7, 6, 3. Then for another one, it's going to be 7, 3, 6. And, and yeah, so basically that's how we're, how we're working that one. The denominator, um, total arrangements, no um, zero. Well, we kind of worked that out um, from um, uh, from up here. So, um, so we're just going to work that through. Um, that is, well, that's, this is actually a probability. So this numerator is this times this. Oh, right, without going into the gory details, you might have to pause the video and just go over it. Um, but that's going to give us a, a, a total probability of 49 60ths. Um, that's a bit of a beast, that one, isn't it? Uh, but I, I, as I say, with these problems, it, it we've got a few different ways of tackling them. And I think very often we, you know, we just have to break it down into this use a little bit of notation just to to work out what the different probabilities are and then actually use you know whatever it is our, our you know our 
any choose R or factorial or whatever way actually gives us that uh, number of combinations or our probability. So um, hopefully um, that has been useful, rather difficult problem to actually talk through, I have to say. Um, but um, hopefully um, that has been useful and thanks for listening.